Why, hello there. Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools. And on today's episode, if you want to see how we completely transform this old, disgusting concrete pad from this to this, keep on watching. Let's get started. As you can see, this concrete pad has been through the ringer over the years, and it's been a while since this thing has had any attention whatsoever. This house was built in the 1950s, so I can only assume that this pad is that old. Now the first step of any concrete rejuvenation project should be cleaning it up properly. And the best thing about it is you can just take your pressure washer to it. And pressure washing a concrete slab, in my personal opinion, is always satisfying. Just note that my pressure washer is a 3000 PSI and I'm using the cleaning nozzle for this application. Oh, and for all of those who are wondering how are my white steps doing, as you can see through the dead of winter, it definitely have gotten dirty, but the pressure washer takes care of the vast majority of the cleanup. I let the slab dry out a bit and then proceed to taking my diamond grinder and grinding away the existing loose debris of the concrete. Now this is an important step because you want to have good adhesion between the new cement patching material and the existing concrete pad. Just remember, this doesn't have to be pretty or perfectly smooth. You just want to try and remove all of the loose particles as well as bring to the surface the concrete that is actually in good quality condition. After you have all the grinding taken care of, just make sure you grab your hose and give it a good rinse just to remove all of the old cement dust particles. And at this point, just also remember to wear a good quality respirator, eye protection, and ear protection because you don't want to be breathing any of this stuff in and just protect your eyes and ears. As for patching material, we are using Quickcrete Quick Setting Cement. Now this is a perfect product to use because it sets up in approximately 10 to 15 minutes and it's meant to be used on horizontal or vertical surfaces. Now you can use water with this mix, but I highly suggest with this type of application to grab yourself some cement bonding and adhesive and mixing up your cement with that. This will just provide more bond strength between the existing concrete pad and the new cement patching material you'll be applying shortly. Now the instructions say to wet the existing concrete first before you apply your patch. And instead of just applying water, I apply the concrete adhesive to the concrete surface and that will provide more bonding strength in the long run. It's now time to apply our cement patch. And with this type of application, I highly suggest getting some type of straight edge and it can be just as simple as a two by four if you have this type of overhang. I'm using a six inch taping knife to maneuver the material into those crevices as neatly and as quickly as possible. I do have some time to work with this product, but not a lot of time because it does set up in 10 to 15 minutes. And based upon the temperature outside, you might even have less time than that. So work in small batches if you feel like you need to. Now the beauty about this product is that it feels more like a clay product than a cement product, which is why it does such an amazing, masterful job at adhering to your existing concrete, even if it's on a completely vertical surface, which we were obviously dealing with with this application. At some points, I do just decide to get my hands dirty and apply it that way, just to get into some of those tinier, smaller areas, but I always come back around with my taping knife and smooth the surface out that way. Now I could let this first coat dry and then apply a second coat to completely smooth out this entire surface, but I wanted to do something more unique and different to this edge, which is why I'm using existing veneered brick, which was featured in my large scale brick veneer on the front of my house. This brick is super easy to cut with a diamond blade, and because all of these bricks need to be approximately the same size, I've set up my own makeshift stop block system where I can easily determine the exact center of every single piece because I have a line where the center needs to be, and each piece is butted up against that one white board as you can see right there. I did have quite a few pieces I needed to cut on this project, which is why I would highly suggest taking your grinder and actually grinding away the cut side of each brick. That will make it look a little bit more natural, and because these bricks are gonna be very visible to anyone that walks by, it's gonna be less noticeable that I cut every single piece at the same exact size. 
Now that we have our bricks cut up, we have allowed the cement mixer to thicken up and harden properly, and we can apply our mortar mix to that surface. I mixed up a batch of rapid set mortar mix, which also dries very quickly, and I start applying that to the back side of each brick. Now the trick to applying a mortar mixture to the back side of any brick, you want a nice peak in the dead center of the brick and that way you can actually smush and push it against the surface, but it will significantly reduce the amount of mortar that seeps out on the sides of the brick. Now because this brick is not providing any structural strength for the slab, as well as the fact that it's just decorative and you're not gonna be worried too much about any force that's gonna be laid upon it, I'm just putting each piece right up against each other. I'm just going for a more unique look and let me know in the comments if you actually like this overall look in the end because I am curious to see what you all think. I also plan to resurface the top portion of this concrete slab just because the exposed aggregate just does not look that great at this point. So let me know in the comments below on what you would like to see on the top portion of this pad. I actually have enough of this brick to actually do more of a herringbone pattern on the very top portion. So I'm thinking about doing that. And if you would like to see that, let me know. After I apply all of the bricks to the edge, I then come back around with some mortar mix and fill in all of those small gaps just to ensure that there's gonna be no moisture being able to get through and diminishing the strength of the bricks. After that's complete, I wipe off the edges with a sponge and guess what? We are done. I always enjoy a good before and after, and as you can see, this is one that is for the record books. Look at that amazing transformation. Personally, I love it, and it complements the existing brick around it very nicely, and I know what you're thinking. Brent, those grout lines on the old brick are driving you crazy. Yes, I will be fixing those in the very near future. And as you can see, this patch is extremely strong and will last for years and years. And that's what I call one beautiful, sexy beast. Oh yeah.